Just gonna start with a warning. This one's actually pretty gross. So several people have been like, hey, you like poop, right? Check out this link. Which to anyone else, that would be incredibly sketchy and please don't click on that link. But it's my academic specialty, so it's totally innocent and actually very appreciated. And the links are to recent news articles about how coronavirus monitoring might be possible through sewage testing. My first thought when I saw this was, hey, I've pooped there. My second thought was this goes to show how much information about you is stored in your poop. The idea behind this method is that genetic material from the virus may be present in the feces of infected individuals, which then enters the wastewater of a community once that person flushes the toilet. The SARS-CoV-2 RNA then gets diluted in a mixture of water, toilet paper, feces, and whatever else you put down your sinks, showers, and toilet. If we can detect the viral RNA in this nightmare soup, we can positively say that COVID-19 is present within the confines of a sanitation agency and possibly use its concentration to estimate the number of people that are infected. A preprint of a study by Wu et al. shows that SARS-CoV-2 RNA can be quantified from wastewater with about 100 viral particles per milliliter of water and samples from Massachusetts. Because stools of infected individuals have been shown to contain between 30,000 and 30 million viral particles per milliliter, you can do some back of the envelope calculations to estimate that between 0.1 and 5% of the population represented by the sewage system was infected with COVID-19. This number is way higher than the 0.026% of Massachusetts estimated to be infected using the traditional testing data. The coronavirus poop method could be so powerful because right now our main limitation is testing. Traditional testing happens at the individual level, and how are you gonna accomplish all of that in a country of 330 million people? This method allows for aggregate testing of thousands of people at a time using just several samples from wastewater. Also, it seems there are many people who have the virus but aren't showing any symptoms, so they wouldn't be getting tested in the first place. This method can address that problem and may be some of the reason why the Wu et al. estimates were so much higher than what was shown in the traditional way. So pretty cool, right? Your poop carries information about you wherever it ends up. And since this is an archaeology channel, I should mention that this can be the case way after you're long gone. The coronavirus testing reminds me of a method that I've mentioned here before, which uses changes in the amount of fecal molecules over time as a way of tracking ancient population change. In a process that is mostly unique to humans, cholesterol gets converted in our stomachs to something called caprosinol that gets carried out with the rest of our waste as a component of poop. Today, caprosinol is used as a way of tracking sewage spills because its presence means that you're dealing with poopy water. But before there are sewage systems and toilets, most people practice open defecation, which means going to the bathroom outside. That poop would be washed away after it rained and collect in a low point like a lake. Caprosinol is something that by and large bacteria don't want, so it can preserve for thousands of years. We can sample lake mud and use changes in the amount of caprosinol over time as a reconstruction of population change for a watershed. So just like how scientists study treatment plants for SARS-CoV-2 RNA and apply their results to the entire population of a sewage system, we can sample lake mud for caprosinol and apply the results to the entire population of a watershed. Additionally, archaeologists look to coprolites, or fossilized poop, to tell us about people's health in the past. Now most of the time the poop isn't actually fossilized or turned to stone, and it's just really, really, really dry. Like dog poop on 4th of July. For this reason, most coprolite research has taken place in deserts and caves, uh, but many environments can preserve poop. It might just not look as good as this. Regardless of how you cut it, coprolites reveal so much about human health in the past. Macroscopic food remains, microscopic starches and phytoliths, and the chemical composition of poop tell us about ancient diets. For example, prehistoric coprolites in Bighorn Cave, Arizona show a diet rich in prickly pear, agave, and sotol, which after ingestion hinder glycemic peaks and lower metabolism, which may help explain the high rates of type 2 diabetes found in the area's modern populations because those foods are no longer widely exploited. Dental health can be approximated by the amount of grit present in coprolites, with high amounts suggesting abraded teeth from all the sand that was in people's foods. You know how when you go to the beach and you leave like a sandwich down for a second and you go to like get a frisbee, you come back and you take a bite and you just feel that crunch and it goes like straight to your brain? Imagine if that happened like all the time because you're living in an open air existence and that was just like Subway sandwiches from hell. Additionally, coprolites help us understand ancient diseases. Bacteria cultured from 13th century coprolites found at Mesa Verde, Colorado contained the genus Clostridium, which includes the species responsible for botulism and tetanus. And parasite eggs contained in coprolites show how prevalent parasites were in the past and how they affected people's health. 
Parasite eggs become more abundant in coprolites from early farming villages in the American Southwest, suggesting that living conditions became less hygienic during the transition from hunter-gatherers to farmers. Parasites found in coprolites from Canyon to Shea, Arizona, cause vitamin B12 deficiency, which in turn can cause a form of anemia. Finally, coprolites contain the information that says the most about you, your DNA. DNA has been extracted from ancient coprolites as a way of confirming a human presence in one of the earliest occupations of America at Paisley Cave, Oregon, dated to about 14,000 years ago. So poop contains information about what you eat, your health, and even your genetic makeup. Now we can add coronavirus to the list. Thanks for watching, and please click subscribe to get even more poopy archaeology. Thank <laughs> you.